Uh, hey, brothers and sisters. Um, well, I wanted to do a kind of news news oriented video this time around. It just seems like the last couple of days there's been some really significant uptick in uh, what's going on. So let me just cover a few things here and uh, you know, tie it back into scripture. Uh, this first one's from a website, Zero Hedge, and it's really this uh, Dr. Gil Mobley talking about uh, the CDC dropping the ball on Ebola. My name is Dr. Gil Mobley. I'm an MD. I'm an emergency trauma physician and a microbiologist. I'm here this morning in the Atlanta airport to put out a public call for action. I believe the CDC is being dishonest with us about the propensity of importing Ebola cases to the United States. Once this disease consumes every third world country, as surely it will, because they lack the same basic infrastructure as Sierra Leone and Liberia, it will devour these countries. And at that point, we will be importing clusters of Ebola on a daily basis. That will overwhelm any advanced country's ability to contain the clusters of isolation and quarantine. That spells bad news. The CDC last week said the chance of importing Ebola was infinitesimal. And that was the same day the patient was misdiagnosed in Dallas. The CDC is derelict in their duty. Yesterday, I came through International Customs in the Atlanta airport. The only question they asked arriving passengers is if they had tobacco or alcohol. That is dereliction of duty. The CDC is asleep at the wheel. Okay. So you, you get that point uh, that doctor's clearly upset, but he's. Uh, just one of a chorus now. Um, this Dave Hodges here, he does a lot of reporting now. Again, he would be in the alternative media, but I think that's part of the problem right now is that uh, you know, the mainstream media, I guess, uh, has been consistently reporting that this Ebola is not really going to be a threat to America. And all uh, Fox News, I think, just recently backtracked on that a little bit. But um, now they're talking about multiple states, uh, Dallas, Portland, Arizona, New York City. Uh, that was off of this site. Then this one is more of a prepper site here that uh, I was just looking for uh, Ebola in the U.S. and Here's another Dr. Croft that claims that there was confirmed 30 Ebola cases in the U.S. as of August 8th. And um, <laughs> you know what they're, with all the activity around this one guy in Dallas, if uh, they're worried about now, I think it was five students that he might have come in contact with are being watched. And uh, I forget how many other people are being observed and now they're tracking his flights and it turns out he was on multiple segments of flights while he was contagious so you can see that it could spread quickly and if this is true this doctor claims he's actually talked to uh, other doctors and other hospitals here 38 doctors and nurses and they had 30 confirmed ebola cases in the u.s so you know is it it's getting harder and harder to uh to believe that we're not being fooled. And here's the other inconsistency. So the first video I showed you, the doctor all upset saying the CDC is lying. And uh, so there was a government institution that was trying to play down the chance of Ebola making it into the US. Well, it's already done that. Uh, and again, here's another site that would be in the alternative media, um, but what they're reporting on here is a, a government supplier of emergency response products specializing in high risk events says that the disaster assistance response teams were told to prepare to be activated in the month of October. The shocking revelation made on uh, one of the fire EMS uh, Twitter pages suggested that not only did someone know Ebola virus would be reaching America, but that they knew exactly when it would happen. So, okay, that's leaning maybe a little bit more toward the conspiracy, but it it sure seems like it's uh, if uh, suppliers um, 
<laughs> we're warned about October and the CDC says, don't worry, the chance of it getting here is uh, minimal. And now doctors are, that are, have some background in this say they absolutely must be lying. Um, and then there's some evidence to say that maybe 30 some odd cases within the last month or so have been already covered up. It's troubling. And I know from the biblical perspective, we're told that uh, pestilence was going to be part of the end time scenario, worldwide pestilence. And I think that's kind of the flavor of what we got from uh, this doctor that was in the hazmat suit. So I'm not really, you know, us as individuals, we can't really hit the panic button. But if you see, you know, people in the field, they're hitting the panic button and then talking about uh, that at least parts of the uh, government responsible for, for this issue appear to be lying. I guess it's, it's coming with high concern for me now. So um, now <laughs> in other news related, uh, I'm not sure if you all saw this, but this is off of RT.com. U.S. tanks arrive in the Baltics. Poland requests greater U.S. military presence. And um, they're talking about that we brought in the Iron Horse tanks. And we're also talking about the missile shield in Poland again, which is exactly what Russia said would trigger their uh, preemptive response. And yet, I guess we're, we're doing something along that front. And... Then this came out yesterday, and uh, Russia and Iran lock NATO out of the Caspian Sea. And if you go into this a little bit, it's not just Russia and Iran. And we all know that in the uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39, the War of Gog and Magog, um, it's Russia leading uh a bunch of nations to come up against Israel. And part of that definition of Russia, the land of Magog, I think it was the Scythians, I want to say Scythians, not sure which pronunciation there to use, but back in the day when that was written and known, it included the lower steps, the, uh, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, here they are, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, in those lower steps of Russia that aren't, you know, it used to be a Soviet Union, but they're the lower steps of Russia now. And they're joining in this alliance with Iran and to block NATO forces out of the Caspian Sea. And so what's important to this to me is that the rest of the players are lining up on the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war front. And uh, again, it's biblical prophecy is really starting to manifest right in front, front of our eyes here. And then uh, one more that appears to be significant. Now, you know, the U.S. has been supplying arms to rebels into Syria for the last year and a half. I mean, I, I think as the data comes out, that's really what the whole Benghazi fiasco was about, was uh, gun and, and, and uh, jihadi <laughs> U.S. was involved in running guns and potentially jihadi units up into Syria through Turkey. And, um, you know, there was a little problem there. And so we've been arming them and then they turn around and now we have this ISIS thing, which apparently includes uh, many of those units that we had been arming. So now ISIS has got a whole bunch of abandoned military equipment that we left after uh, the Iraq war that we left in the desert. They're running around in our Humvees and their, and their tanks and uh, artillery, as well as we left uh, stuff in the desert of Libya that uh, now Boko Haram has. So, uh, you know, they made the mistake once and now it's armed up our supposed enemy and now we made the mistake again in Libya. Again, I'm, I'm getting jaded, but the important biblical part of this here is we know that in um, Isaiah uh, 17 that uh, Damascus uh, will become a ruinous heap 
So I, I thought I'd just pop it up here. Isaiah 17, 1, the burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city and shall be a ruinous heap. And, uh, you know, many people talk about these passages, say that um, this is a real significant prophecy because Damascus is could be the oldest continuously inhabited city. And so the fact that we've got this prophecy here about it being completely taken away from being a city, we can have 100% confidence that that hasn't happened yet. And they've, you know, Syria's had that civil war in there uh, for however long that was, you know, a year and a half or whatever now as well. But it hasn't really gotten down to eliminating Damascus as a city. And, you know, there's... Uh, this last reference here, and behold, at evening tide, trouble, and before morning, he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us and a lot of them that rob us. And so, you know, this potentially could be a, a very devastating single event. And I bring this up here because I guess on 60 Minutes here a couple days ago, uh, Barack Obama was interviewed and um Here's a little portion of the interview. The Steve Croft said, you said that we need to get rid of Assad. And Ob President Obama said, yeah. And while we're saying that we have to get rid of Assad, we are also bombing and trying to take out some of his most threatening opponents. The And then uh, President Obama said, I recognize. And the beneficiary of this is Assad. And President Obama said, I recognize the contradiction in a contradictory land, in a contradictory circumstance, we are not going to stabilize Syria under the rule of Assad because the Sunni area inside of Syria view Assad as having carried out terrible atrocities. The world has seen them. Hundreds of thousands of people have been killed. Millions have been displaced. So for a long-term political settlement for Syria to remain unified, it's not possible that Assad presides over that entire process. On the other hand, in terms of immediate threats to the United States, ISIL, the Corazon group, those folks could kill Americans. And so, and I bring this up because <clears throat> you could have interpreted that maybe we were going to leave Assad alone um, and that this whole thing about fighting ISIS or ISIL that's come to the forefront was about eliminating terrorists that were running around cutting off people's heads and persecuting Christians. But uh, it sure seems like there's a secondary motivation and where's the headquarters if you want to say of the Assad regime it's Damascus and so if he's going to take out uh, Assad as part of this plan here to go in and get ISIS or ISIL uh, we, we, we could see Isaiah 17 potentially coming soon and, and again it's you know, who's against this plan that we've hatched? It's Russia and Iran. And so, you know, that brings the Ezekiel 38 war back into play. This is uh, Isaiah 17 here. And, and actually many people put Isaiah 17 in the same time frame as the Psalm 83 war, which we don't have time to get into today. So I don't know. It just seemed like to me uh, with pestilence. I mean, we talked about Ebola. We didn't talk about the other uh, outbreaks that, that are currently going across the nation right now. Uh, sure seems like the birth pangs are, are getting more intense. And now we see real clear signals that these biblical prophecies are, you know, just about done stage setting. And uh, so I just think, saints, it's, you got to keep Keep your eye on the word and I guess uh, keep looking up. Could be any time.